Hello, my name is Mr. Howard, and in this video, we will be looking at the sensing and the operator's options within Scratch. So let's look through a couple of these sensing menu options. We have uh, touching right here, so we'll use this in a minute. And in video game design, if uh, you have the collision of two objects, then you probably want something to happen. If one object touches another, you want something to happen. Well, that's a perfect application uh, when we get to video game design, and we'll actually use that in just a moment. Another one that you'll use a lot is to ask for user input. So you can ask the user a question and they answer something, and then use this answer in your code to perform an action and use that in an action, etc. And we'll we'll use that. But there are many options in here, and I encourage you to try many of them. That's the way you learn is by trial and error and finding ways to use these various options. In the operator section you have your normal mathematics related operators like addition, subtraction, and multiplication, division. We can have uh, Sprite pick a random number from one number to another. We can give it a range to choose from. We have our um, comparison operators here. Uh, the relational operators are called so like less than, equal to, greater than and in computer science, we call those the relationals. Here we have some logic-based operators. So if one condition and another condition are true, then we can do something. If one condition or another is true, we can do something. If not one condition, so in other words, if we don't have a condition, we can do something. That's what those are used for. Right here we have the string-related operators. And when you work with a text-based language, a uh, data type, uh, is a string and you'll you'll work with that a lot a uh, the mod is very important and that's one you're probably not used to and we'll talk about that in a moment but we can do a lot of cool things with that and we're about to do a project with it uh, the round option is also useful and then so we can actually see it on the screen drop this down and you have all of these options here as well that you can access and use so I mentioned earlier that this mod was important, so we're going to talk about a couple of topics and apply some definitions here. So in a text-based language, not in Scratch, Scratch is a little different, but in a text-based language, which is what we are preparing for for later in the year when we're using Scratch in a computer science class, integer, integer division, like in Java, for example, when both the dividend and divisor, so the two numbers you're dividing, our integers, the result returned by the computer, will also be an integer and the remainder is going to be dropped. And that's very useful and you can use that in a lot of cases with your code. So it's, it's actually, it may seem like a problem, but it's actually a good thing. And then the modulus operator, which Scratch has and you can use in text-based language. In a, a text-based language like Java, we use percent to, to, to denote the modulus operator. Modulus is also called modulo. And it's also called mod for short, by the way. So what does the modulus operator uh, actually do? It divides one value by another and returns the remainder. So this is the way you might put it in to your text-based language. And we would read it this way. 10 mod 3 equals 1. And 10 mod 3 is equal to 1. Why? Because mod is returning the remainder. And if you divide 10 by 3, you get 1. So let's do some basic math quickly here and go through that. So we have some vocabulary review dividend divided by the divisor equals the quotient, right? So let's say we had a dividend of 10. We were dividing it by a divisor of 3. And in grade school, you would do 10 divided by 3 is 3 with a remainder of 1, right? So in Java, in text-based languages, if you write this in your code, what's going to be returned, 10 divided by 3, is just the integer portion. The remainder is going to be dropped. So 10 divided by 3 is going to return a 3. If, however, we did 10 mod 3, that's going to return the remainder, which would just be 1. So let's go through that. So 10 divided by 3. 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. We subtract those numbers. 10 minus 9 is 1. So 3 is the whole number part, and the 1 was the remainder. So if we do the integer division in Java, 
we're going to get that re that three returned to us just like we see here if we do mod we're going to get the remainder portion returned to us like we're showing here so very important that you understand that all right let's go back to scratch and use it so let's say that we were given a problem situation where we wanted the project said that we had to ask the user to enter a number and then tell the user whether their number was even or odd and mod is going to be a great option for us here it's going to make it actually very easy to write that code so let's do that we'll start with when clicked we'll go to sensing and ask the user a question and in our case we're going to be asking the user to enter a number then we're going to go to control here we're going to use an if else statement we talked about these control statements last time so now we need an operator here and we're going to use a couple of them in this case we're going to need mod here so here we're going to use the modulus operator to our advantage so that's some basic math for you and you know this if you divide any number by two if it's even, the remainder is going to be zero. There will be no remainder left. 10 divided by two, it's going to be equal to five. There's no remainder. If you divide nine by two, nine divided by two, you're going to get uh, a remainder. You're not going to be able to, it's going to be four remainder one. So the remainder will not be zero. So when you divide an even number by two, the remainder is zero. When you divide an odd number by two, the remainder is something other than zero. So we're going to use that to our advantage here. So we're going to drop the modulus in right there. Actually, I'm wrong right here. There we go. So if the answer to the question, mod two, so if we divide the answer that the user gives us by two and it equals zero, then what do we know? We just discussed it. We know that that is an even number. So we're going to use that to our advantage. So if the number entered by the user mod two is equal to zero, then we want to say something. We want to tell the user that their number is even. So we're going to bring in a save block right here. And we'll say your number is even. And we'll say it for three seconds instead otherwise so else so if it's not true if we divide their number by two and the remainder is something other than zero then we know that their number is odd so the modulus operator makes this pretty easy so we'll drop that block in right there so if it is an odd number we'll say your number is odd we'll say that for three seconds all right so there's our code so let's try it out click our lion here says enter a number, so let's enter an even number 10. He should tell us that our number is even. Your number is even. All right, great. Let's try an odd number. So let's try 17. Your number is odd. Perfect. Let's try a. Like that. We'll try another number. We'll try something large. 1056. That one should be even. And it is. So it doesn't matter how big the numbers are, our code will uh, do what we wanted it to do. Okay, one more example. I'm going to try to keep this video to 10 minutes. That may not happen. Let's say we were given the situation where we wanted our uh, objects to interact. So what we're going to do, try to make this as quick as possible. We're going to make a new sprite and I'm going to make a tree so let's make a rectangle here, make the tree trunk, paint it. Then, let's see my artistic skills here. We'll make a tree. It's beautiful. What a pretty tree. Okay, so let's paint that. And there is our tree. And this is a beautiful tree without a doubt. All right, so now let's move our sprite over here. Go to scripts and let's 
write some code. So what we want to do, we want to move the lion, have the code move the lion, and if he hits the tree, we're going to have him say, ouch. So we're going to use that sensing option to do that. So events, let's do um, when the sprite is clicked, sounds good. And we want it to move, so let's move, we'll have him move 20 steps. And we need some control here. So if, so what we're going to say here, we're going, when we click the lion, he's gonna move forward 20 steps. If he hits the tree, he's going to say, ouch. That's it, that's all we need. So we need some sensing here, and we talked about this touching option here. So if the, and I'm working with the line here, by the way, let's go through this quickly. If I click this sprite, any code I put in is referring to the tree. If I click this sprite, any code I put in is referring to the line, so that's important. So now that I have, if the line is touching, drop this down, and we have sprite one, which is our uh, the beautiful amazing tree that I drew here and so if the lion is touching the tree then let's say so we'll do a say command we'll say ouch and we'll say it for two seconds so that's fine okay so the code is in here so if I come over here and click my lion he should move forward and everything will be fine he's just having a nice walk through the jungle until he's not watching what he's doing and he hits the tree and then he should say ouch so let's see so he's moving forward every time i click oh he hit the tree ouch back him up moving forward hit the tree ouch back him up moving forward hit the tree ouch ouch he's still hitting the tree back him up do it again hit the tree ouch okay so a little over 10 minutes here but uh, it'll be just over 12, so that's not too bad. So we covered a couple of major topics here. Integer division, modul the modulus operator, and how it's used. And you saw a prime example of how that mod operator can be very useful to us when we are working with code and, and solving problems. We went through the operators menu. We went through the sensing menu. So I encourage you now to work on some projects of your own and try and incorporate uh, blocks of code from the operators and sensing menus. That's it for this video.